Right, thanks ever so much for everybody that's uh, uh, attending today. Um, purpose of today's uh, webinar is to run through uh, Dracer's uh, document uh, distribution product, um, ideally aimed at customers that are already utilizing the product, um, but I can see we've got a couple of uh, new uh, uh, faces on the webinar today. So, you know, useful uh, to have a look at the product, see how it works, see some of the uh, more unusual ways of using the product um, that's that can really benefit you moving forwards. Um, so on the webinar today, we've got uh, Sam from Dracer, who's going to run through. Um, just before I pass over to you, Sam, um, just to let everybody know, we are recording today's session. Um, so um, we'll um, obviously put this uh, online and share this. So if there's anybody else within the business you, you want to uh, want to see it, uh, then obviously you can do so. But uh, yeah, without me uh, going on for too long, I'll pass over to yourself, Sam. Perfect. Thank you, Richard. Um, welcome, everyone. Like Richard said, to this uh, Spindle Document Management. So I'm going to show you how we get the most out of your Spindle Document Management and present it um, to anyone who's not seen it before. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start sharing my screen. And hopefully you can all now see my PowerPoint. So Spindle Document Management, uh, who are we to start with? We are Dracer. We've been knocking around um, the Sage channel for about 19 years now. You can see we've won multiple awards in the industry and we've got customers all over the world. Um, you know, we're trusted by thousands and thousands of organisations. And although this number says 87,000 users worldwide, that is actually pushing more towards um, your hundreds, 120,000 users at this moment in time. So Dracer's product stack. So very quickly, this is what we're going to be focusing on today is the Spindle document management um, suite. So this is our document distribution. So everything we send out of Sage 200. And then the other half of it is our Spindle document capture, which is bringing documentation back into Sage 200. And together we hope to achieve as much of a paperless office as possible with this product. We also have a couple of other products just to mention that also link quite nicely into the document management suite is we have Spindle document recognition. So this is for processing your purchase invoices. Um, we have an OCR software that basically scrapes the data and automatically posts and archives it into 200 matching against any potential purchase order or transaction. We also have Spindle self-service. This is an online portal for customers and for internal staff to use. So you can come in, look at your invoices, statements, make an order. You know, salespeople can use it as on the road um, to place orders for their customers when they're sat in front of them as well. We also have Excel Data Bridge. So this is really good if you currently work a lot in Excel and you're current constantly uploading sheets into Sage 200. So we have a validation tool in here. So if you're aware of Sage 200, when you upload a sheet, it won't tell you what's wrong um, with it. If there is a problem, whereas ours does, it tells you exactly what's wrong and how to fix it. And then finally, we've got our advanced credit control, which is called Credit Hound. So um, currently the Sage 200 credit control consists of mainly an aged debtors report that you print off and run through. Um, we've got an automated chasing system within our software and you know we uh, we really try and automate and create an advanced uh, credit control process. So that's our uh, product stack. So we'll start with the first part of Spindle document management, which is our document distribution. So what is it? So you can see it's basically, as I said at the top, it's distributing any documentation that comes out of Sage 200. The key here is we make it flexible and customizable to your needs and make it as relevant to how you need to send it and who to send it to as possible. We can do it as an individual or we can batch document as distribute so we can send all your invoices. If you send them all out Friday morning, all of a thousand of them say, you know, we can handle that. We can add extra attachments and this is where we link nicely in with our document capture module, as you'll see shortly. Um, so we can attach documentation to the email. So, for example, if we're sending a statement out, we may use the distribution module. Um, it has these what we call hash hash commands that we write onto the report. And with that statement, what we will do is the hash hash command will check the statement and add any 
of the invoices that are outstanding from the statement as a PDF on the email. We also automatically archive any documents sent through Spindle document distribution. So if you're using Spindle distribution at the minute, what you'll notice is when you send an invoice or a statement out, they get archived in a location um, on your server potentially or on your local machine in a folder. What we do is with our capture side of things, we then start to archive those documents against the transaction, against the customer account or against the sales order or purchase order, say. So we'll definitely look at that in the demo very shortly. So why do we need it? So a few reasons here, improve efficiency and reduce costs. Um, I mean, that's pretty obvious if we're sending out additional documentation that you'd usually have to go to a space for to drag and drop into an email. You know, we're doing that automatically and we're cutting down on paper usually in postage. We can copy in colleagues as well. It's a really nice feature. So you'll see when I send out my sales invoice, it will copy in various people to it. Um, so, you know, you don't have to create a secondary email as we go along. This one's a really nice and underrated feature that we've seen a lot more take up of in recent times, and that's enhancing the corporate identity. So I'm sure you're aware of how much it costs to create a corporate identity or create your brand. Um, and what you tend to find is that you spend all this money going all through everything you send out, um, putting your corporate identity on, and then everything that comes from the accounts team is kind of pretty basic. And that's because ERP systems naturally just don't lend themselves to making things nice and pretty. They are pretty basic um, reports or invoices that get sent out. So with Spindle document distribution, we can add your logos, promotional messages, you know, in the document, in the email content, and we'll definitely see all of that going on in a moment's time. And finally, quicker payments. So we can add a pay now button. So if you're using SagePay or Payo as it's now known, if you're using WorldPay or Stripe, um, we can add a pay now button onto the actual invoice or statement or onto the email body itself and the customer can click on that pay now button. It takes them to their relevant portal and then they can pay that bill from that portal. So it's all about breaking down the barriers to not being paid with that as well. So then we've got the other side of things, spindle document capture. So if I just click through these, oh, perfect. So with document capture, what we're effectively doing is bringing documentation into Sage 200 that we want to use. So we can do it in multiple different ways. So we can do it from, you know, your mobile phone or your tablet, as long as you've got the app for it. Um, we can drag and drop from a folder location or an email and we can scan in. So some people still send um, documentation. So purchase orders or purchase invoices may come in uh, via the post. Some people are still doing that. And we can, if, as long as you've got a scanner, we can scan that in and we can capture that actual document within Sage 200 itself. We can also do it via barcodes um, so we can print out via distribution with a barcode on it and then when it comes back in we can scan it and the barcode will pick up what document or what transaction that barcode is associated to and we'll automatically capture it against that and this bit we've touched on ever so slightly so we can auto attach captured documents to emails so if we capture so you'll see in a moment in the demo if we capture say a purchase order from an email and we attach that to a sales order you know using the document distribution and the hash hash commands when we send out these order acknowledgements say we can ask it or tell it to go pick up any associated documentation such as a purchase order and pop that on the email so you've got this uh, chain or you're starting to build up this story around your order and um, for whatever purpose that may be. So there's other things we can attach as well. So proof of deliveries, we'll definitely look at that. Certificates of conformity, you know, photo of the finished work, we can also do that as well. So any documentation you want to capture in Sage 200, maybe it's against a stock item, so warranties, um, you know, ingredients lists, whatever it may be, you can do that and we can add those to an email when they get sent out. Hopefully now you can see my virtual machine with the Dracer background. What we're gonna do is we are just gonna open up Sage 200. Hopefully this is nice and familiar to you all.
We're going to focus on the sales order processing side for the majority of this um, demo because it is the easiest to show um, and does highlight a lot of places where we can capture and distribute together and how they work in unison. So to start with, I'm just going to place a bog standard order. So hopefully when this whirls around, I'm going to find Abby, my customer, I've got customer order number in. I'm going to add just a single item. We don't need to do anything too fancy here. So that's the bit I usually forget to do, so that's good. So I've got my order for Abby, just a single cooker here. What you should notice is at the bottom here, before I save this, I've got this little drop down here. So this is the first time capture comes into play. So if you haven't, if you've got distribution but not capture, this currently won't be there for you if you do go back and have a look. But if you upgrade your user to a full user, which includes the capture and distribution elements, you'll get this little feature. So I've got the option to capture a file so I can do nothing, capture a file, capture a scan, capture from a pending tray, which is basically like a holding area for documentation or from barcodes as well. Whatever I select and save, it will remember that for the next time. So you don't have to always come in and choose what you want to do if you are going to be doing the same thing each time. So for my example, I'm just going to capture a file. So if I save that order, that's just going to whirl around momentarily. Give me an order number, so 5133. And hopefully, when this whirls around, it's going to give me my capture element. So when I was speaking earlier from the slideshow about we capture documents in different ways, so I could capture a document via a browse. If you had an area of your server or your local machine that you could browse to, you know, pick up a purchase order and, and select it from there, it would show up in here. But the most common way these sorts of things come in is via email. So you can see here, I've got Avi Retail, have sent me an email, they've sent me a PO. Um, I, can, I can pick this up drag it and drop it in and it will um, start to capture that item. I can also drag and drop a whole email in as well. So, you know, if you wanted to capture the whole email, you could, and that's no problem, but I just want to capture a single document. So I'm just going to minimize this. And here's my Abbey Retail purchase order for that cooker. So on the left hand side now, I've got this archive document data. So I firstly, I've got my document type, customer purchase order. Now it's not done anything really fancy here and scraped the data and worked out that it's a purchase order. It's just assumed it's a purchase order based on where we've added it. So we've added it at the sales order creation stage. So it thinks, OK, if you're adding a document here, it's most likely going to be a purchase order. If it wasn't, if it was something else, I could just drag and drop. Well, have a look in this list um, and select those. This list is completely customizable as well. So some of these might you might not use um, and you may have documents that you want to capture that aren't in this list. So you can add those, um, not a problem at all. We've next got our associated data and this comes into play um, towards well, much later on in the demo. So we have a document search functionality and, and we'll touch on that in a bit. But basically in the search feature, you can search via any of these details that have been added here. Now, again, this associated data is completely customizable. What you can also do is make that data mandatory. So if I select this one, you can see now I've got my return number and turn date in a red box. So I can't actually archive until these have been filled in. So, you know, if you wanted to capture certain details when a document is captured in Sage 200, you could make those boxes or any box you wanted mandatory. But for now, I'm just going to keep my purchase order. I'm going to press archive. And that'll whirl around. You can see at the bottom here, the document was successfully archived. It's given it a name against the order. So 5133 and it's given a document. So I'm just going to come out of there. This is now saved, that order is now saved. So the next stage would be to acknowledge the order. What I'm going to do first is just give you a very quick look at what's happened to this order now. So if I come in here, 5133, you can now see when I've entered this order, I've got this little one here and I've got this little symbol here. So again, this is the same as what we've got when we created the sales order. So all those options about capturing a document. So at any point I can come into this sales order and capture another as many documents as I want. I can also see what's already been captured. So I've got this little one. So it's the customer purchase order that I've literally 
just captured. So hopefully that should look exactly the same. So it is. So I can come back in here at any point to view that documentation. OK, but I just exit out of that. And move quite nicely into my acknowledge order. So this is the first time we see distribution coming into play. And you'll see how distribution and capture work really nicely together um, to send this order acknowledgement out. So if it's going to load for me, there we go. So if I display this order, this is the one I've just created, and I press print. That will give, if we give it a minute, so all we do is anyone who's using distribution will already know about this. Any new people will. All you have to do is select the printer being spindle, press OK. It's going to whirl around and send out. I may have to accept something. If we give this a sec. Yep. Perfect. So that's whirled around and sent out my order acknowledgement. So if I come into my drafts, I've now got this order acknowledgement that's been sent. So you can see here I've got this branding, this customized area. Um, when I spoke about Spindle Self Serve, we can add links to it so they can check an order status or they can contact you directly via the customer portal that we um, that is one of our products. We've got here the body, so we've got the sales order number, who it's to, who it's for, when it was processed, all this information you might expect. We've also attached that customer purchase order, so um, you'll see, I'll just open it to prove it, but that is the purchase order that I captured just moments ago. We've got a hash hash command on the sales order acknowledgement that has said, you know, pick up this customer purchase order if there is one there, and there was, so it's attached it to the order acknowledgement. We've got our sales order acknowledgement here, so you can see we've got all this nice fancy uh, branding on it, but it's huge chili in the background. I've also got this terms and conditions of sale. So although that may not look like a lot, if you look at this and see all this branding here, it's basically an overlay. So what we've got is the Sage 200 standard order acknowledgement that may have been you know, moved around and worked uh, by the chaps at EBS to make it look nice. And what we've got from a Drace point of view is the concept of overlays. So you can just literally stick an overlay on the top of a basic Sage form, and it just comes with all this branding, you know, everything that's in red here, and you know, this huge chili in the background, or thank you for your business, come back soon, you know, all of this is part of the overlay. Now we can even take that a step further, actually, and say, you know, we may have different colored or different styles of overlay depending on various criteria. So for my example, for retail customers, it will be a red chili and all of this data will be red. If I go into my emails and just look at this sales order and open this one up, you can see it's yellow because it's for a construction customer. And even the email is all yellow branded because that's how I want it to look for my construction customers. It's exactly the same, everything's the same, it's just using a different colored overlay. So you can do that for any of your customers if you do have different types. Also, terms and conditions of sale. So this isn't standard Sage 200. This is a document that we have asked the order acknowledgement to attach as a second page, um, which a lot of people may want to do. So in Sage 200, you currently don't have that option, but with the Spindle di document distribution, you can ask it to attach as many documents onto the back of it as standard as possible. So these tend to be fixed documents. So anything like a terms and conditions of sale, a COVID policy, what have you, you know, if, you, if it's a standardized document, you can just ask it to always be attached to the back of any documentation. So that's our sales order acknowledgement that we've sent out. The next step would be to print a picking list. So some of you may use picking lists, some of you may not. So if you don't skip forward a couple of minutes, um, if you do use them, what we can do is find this picking list and print it through spindle document distribution again. So it's just going to run that report, send it through spindle pro. Again, it will do its little whirl around and then hopefully we should have another draft. 
So it's now sent a picking list to the warehouse. So what we can do here is if you do have a warehouse, we've sent this as an email to the warehouse at homestyle.co.uk. We've got the pick list of the PDF here. But what we can also do is get it to send to a printer at the same time without having to do any additional um, printing. So effectively, for all my picking lists, I've got a command on there that says send an email and also send to this hard printer down in the warehouse. So it doesn't rely on someone checking the emails to print this pick list out for someone to walk around the warehouse, scan it, sign it, whatever it may be. So you can do that as well. If I just actually look at this picking list, you can see here it's pretty standard Sage 200 picking list, but the difference is, is I've got a barcode on it. So what happens with that is if I print this out, go around, tick to say I've picked this item, sign here, scan this back in, it will grab the barcode and it will capture it back into Sage 200 and assign it to the sales order because that's where it needs to go. So that's a little something you can do if you are using picking lists in the warehouse. So next step is to confirm our goods dispatched. So here we've got our order. You can now see I can capture a document again or I can have a look. So we've got number two. But why have we got a number two? Because I've not actually captured a second document. But what it is, is what I was speaking about earlier about how distribution automatically will archive against the sales order or against a supplier name, customer name, whatever it may be. So what it's actually done is when it's sent out and distributed this order acknowledgement, it's actually archived it against the sales order as well using the capture side of things. So you can see here, everything we send out is gonna end up in this line, in this list for us. So I'm just going to send this out now. Say goods have been dispatched. Again, it will whirl around. It will ask me what do I want to print it via. So Spindle Pro Auto and press OK. It's worth noting at this point, you don't have to go through this individually to use Spindle. Um, you can just batch send all of these and it will just whirl around and send them out um, as it gets to them. So now I've got two emails that have been sent two extra emails from that goods dispatch. So firstly, I've got the customer copy telling Haley that we've dispatched her order. Um, here's the dispatch note. So we've got the dispatch note here. We just put another overlay on it. But we've also got uh, proof of delivery paperwork. So depending on if you do your own deliveries or if you use a third party courier, you know, you may print these proof of deliveries out. So this has again gone down to the warehouse to give to the driver. So what you may do is you may print this out and what we've added onto it again is a barcode, you know, the signature stuff that you've got here. So when this comes back in, we can scan it and capture it against the document. If you wanted to take your proof of delivery one step further within our Spindle self-serve module, we do have a proof of delivery module itself where you can um, create routes for drivers. Um, they have a mobile app that you can sign for on those to say you've received delivery. And all of that information comes directly straight back into Sage 200. So no need to print any paperwork out. It's all done on, on a tablet, on a mobile device um, that goes out with your actual drivers. But for now, we're just going to focus on this delivery note here. So what I'm going to do very quickly is I am just going to go into our sales order. Now I'm just going to capture that proof of delivery. So for the purposes of this, we're going to pretend that this has been signed and it's coming back in. I'm just going to select proof of delivery here and archive that against my sales order. So back into our processing list. Next step is the good bit printing the invoices, sending those out. So again, I can do this as a single order or I can do it as a um, batch. So here's my order I've been working on. I'm going to print that out now. Again, just need to use that Spindle Pro Auto. So my invoices have been printed now. If I just close that down, Spindle a whirl around. I'll come into here and hopefully I've got two new emails. 
So firstly, I've got the customer copy. So here is my customer copy invoice uh, in the text. You can see the invoice number, date, um, invoice number and date. We've got that pay now button I was talking about that we'll look at in a minute. So we've got our branding again, our, our links to the self-serve portal. We've then got our customer invoice. So you can see again, it's another overlay over the basic Sage 200 one. And we've got the terms and conditions of sale again that we've attached. And again, we've got the pay now button. So if I just click on this pay now button, it should take me to my Sage Pay portal. And as Haley Bass at um, Abbey Retail, I can now select my card type and get this £359 paid. And that will come straight back into your Sage 200. The other thing I've added is the proof of delivery. So in the real world, if that was uh, captured at the sales order level, it would have someone's signature here. So Haley has proof that they've received it and someone their end has signed for it. So it reduces the amount of querying or disputing of invoices as well. If you've got this sort of proof effectively to go back to them with and say, look, here's your invoice. Here's the proof you've received it. Here's the pay now button. Let's get this invoice paid. So hopefully it's all about getting that money back into your company as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So as much as this is a distributing of invoices and you know what other documentation says 200 and capturing documents, it's also a mini, very mini light credit control solution as well, because you are just making it a lot easier for people to pay um, and you are breaking down the barriers that you know are most common for people not paying. Secondly, I've got um, this. I'll move that above. We've got this in email that's been sent to Phil Simmons. So Phil is one of my account managers at Homestyle Kitchens, and basically we've got a command on our invoice that says, you know, if there's an analysis code or some kind of criteria in Sage 200 that Phil is assigned to that account for, then send him an email with the invoice with the proof of delivery that gives him a very brief breakdown of what's been sent. So, you know, he can follow that up to maybe even do some credit control for you. Um, he can, you know, if Haley calls him and queries the order, you know, he's got this information here. He can send the, the invoice back to her. You know, she says, oh, I've lost the invoice. Can you resend it? There's no need to go call accounts. Phil can just pass on the invoice from here if needed. So it's nice for your account managers to get or your salespeople to get an overview of what's going on with their accounts. So quick worth mentioning as well, all these in emails that I've printed via Spindle have gone through into my drafts folder. Now that is purely for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, you can have it set to go to drafts if you want to. But if you're trying to automate these processes, the best thing to do is to not send it to drafts and just have them go out automatically. So in the real world, these would never see my drafts folder. These would already have been sent, but because they're all going to dummy emails um, and I need to show you what I'm doing, it's better to just have them sent to drafts in here. So if I go to my sales order list, um, look in here. Hopefully we should see, you know, we've got all these documents stored. Once I post the invoice, then it will show in here. Um, so yeah, that's where that shows. Um, we can capture against many other places within Sage 200 as well. So we can capture, say, at the transaction line. If you don't use sales orders, you know, you can come in. Uh, where, let's pull up that page retail and if we just drill into abbey retail very quickly we can look at these transaction lines and you can see each transaction line may have documents associated to it so if it doesn't have a sales order you may just be able to you can just um, capture against that line as well so you can see anywhere we've got this one and this little capture icon we can put documentation against that so yes all these are soft is there any that aren't soft if there wasn't, um, if it was just a sales invoice, you know, that didn't use sales order processing, we could capture in here as well. We can also capture at the stock item level, which I mentioned before. So some uses our customers have for that are, you know, ingredients lists are captured there. So when a sales orders acknowledgement or an invoice is sent out, you know, the ingredients list goes with it or the nutritional advice or say the, um, the drawings or the data behind that 
uh, particular stock item can be captured and sent out as well. Uh, we can capture at a nominal level as well. So um, if that is something that you needed to do, we could also do that as well. Aside with neglected is the purchase order side. So if I just show this very, very briefly, you know, when you confirm goods received, you can capture documentation there. You can capture purchase invoices as well. If you're using our purchase invoice recognition software, that will do it automatically for you. You know, any sort of documents that come in on this side, we can capture within the system as well. So I'll just run through a couple of things that are a bit more in the back end for you now, just to finish off. So I mentioned about we have a document search. So in this document search, this is fantastic. So anything I've ever captured or sent out, say 200 with Spindle, is stored here. So if I was to click on Abbey Retail or just Abbey, it will show me every single document I've captured since the start of me using this software um, with these people. And then I can filter based on certain criteria here. So all that associated data at the start as well, anything that was stored in associated data, you can put into here and it will pull up everything associated with that document as well. This is also a fantastic place for you to sit a auditor. So auditors will come in and, you know, say, I need everything associated to sales order number, you know, 00005126. Well, you sit them down in front of this software and say, well, type it in yourself and off you go. Um, so they can, uh, take a weight off your mind, let the auditors go. They can search through all your data. You know, they don't have to go through a lever arch file or you don't have to go through the lever arch file. That's got documents overflowing. Just bang them in front of this and off they go. Now, the other part to that I'm just going to touch on in the back end is that HMRC have guidance around how you electronically store documents safely. So what we have is we have this concept of locking documents. So on your server, you can set any documentation in Sage 200 to be locked and therefore it cannot be deleted. So you can see here, I've got my sales invoices. So I'm sure you're aware invoices have to be kept for six or seven years, I think. Um, so what you can do is you can put a lock on this invoice or on invoices generally that says no one can delete these for seven years, say. You may not want them ever deleted, so you may put a lock on for 999 years. Um, so no one can come in and delete those. So you might have, uh, you know, it happens from time to time. You know, the uh, someone loses their job potentially, comes in, tries to delete a few things, ruin your, ruin your day. Um, but with this, they wouldn't be able to. And you can set these locks depending on document type. So, you know, we're not locking the purchase orders, but we are the sales invoices and dispatch notes. So this is how you keep your documents HMRC compliant with storage. The other side to that is obviously maintaining your server yourself with, you know, the correct antivirus firewalls, et cetera. And that those two things together make this a complete HMRC compliant product. So with that, that basically concludes the um, spindle document management overview uh, hopefully you've learned a couple of things if you do have any questions or comments please get in contact with myself or richard and darren at ebs and i'm sure one of us will be happy to help um, in that instance all right thank you for attending have a nice day actually, actually um we do have one question sam yeah okay um is it possible to store um copies of documentation against sales orders yeah of course so if i go into my sales order so i can capture literally anything in here so if i was to press that so we've got the obviously i've got the purchase order already saved yeah if i was to browse to a location look for my quote say and then all it would be is a simple case of uh, just double clicking and you know, deciding it was a, I think I've got, I've got a quote in here somewhere. I haven't got quotes set up, but you know, you could pick quote from here. Um, that's what I usually use for quote, miscellaneous sales order documentation, and um, say it's a quote somewhere within the associated data, and then just press archive. And now that's living in, um, 
in Sage 200. So yeah, basically any documentation you want to capture against, you know, a sales order, a stock item, whatever it may be, we can certainly do that. All you'd have to do is simply press the um, capture functionality. So when you're capturing as well, if you want to bulk capture, so you could scan in, say, 100 documents um, within our document portal. So if you think about Sage 200, where I was showing you how to capture, you can capture from a pending tray. So what you can do is you can send, you know, invoices, you know, pictures of damaged goods, whatever it may be to a pending tray. And then you can just go one it, rather than, you know, capturing from a sales order, scan it in, add it in um, do all the data, pop it back and then go do it all over again. You could just scan 100 documents. They all sit in here and then you can just go through each sales order and just add them to it from there as well. Is that OK for you? Brilliant, I think so. I think that seems to Perfect. answer the I question. It. There's, there's one other just come in okay. um, from a customer that doesn't have the capture capability. So they, they're on an older version using uh, spindle distribution only. Yeah. So how, how can they get to the uh, to the point where they can start actually capturing? Uh, yeah, good question. So that will be definitely a conversation to have with Darren and Richard at EBS. But effectively, what you've got is distribution license and all you need to do is upgrade that license from distribution to full and full includes the capture element as well. We do uh, with the pricing on that, there is a significant discount to get you from distribution to full, obviously, because you've already paid for so much of the software. Um, so we do help you out, get from distribution to full, but that is definitely something Darren and Richard can go through with you um, their end on pricing. But that's pretty much all you need to do to get to the capture element. You may need a bit of training from the chaps at EBS on how to use it, um, depending on if people have seen this webinar or not. So that's the other thing to consider as well. Great, thank you. Is there any more questions or is, Darren, can you see any more or is that it? No, oh, that, that appears to be it. Brilliant, thanks. we've uh, exhausted everybody. <laughs> but uh, thanks ever so much, Sam, for, uh, for doing the webinar and hopefully it's uh, been useful. Uh, obviously, if there are any other questions, feel free to, uh, you know, direct, as you say, through to myself or uh, Darren. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll continue to run these webinars moving forward as well. So if there's anything that you do want covering, let us know and uh, we'll see if we can arrange it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.